A portion of this video is sponsored by Skillshare. On the night of October 15th, 1991, an unknown particle streaked across the Utah sky. The particle was going so fast that in a year-long race with a beam of light, it would have lost by a mere thousandth of the width of a human hair. At this speed, it would take over 215,000 years for the photon to gain a one centimeter lead over the particle. The energy this particle contained was equivalent to dropping a bowling ball from chest height, but bowling balls are made of more atoms than there are stars in the observable universe. All of this energy was contained in just a single particle. If you are saying, oh my god, so were the researchers that found it. And that's what it became called, the oh my god particle, the most powerful cosmic ray ever detected. That is, until last week, when a particle of similar power arrived at Earth from somewhere deep in space. But where are these particles coming from? What is causing them? And how can they possibly exist? Let's dive in. In Dugway Proving Ground, Utah, at the fly's eye detector, an array of dozens of spherical mirrors that dot the ground, as they rotated up to the night sky, they picked up a faintly glowing trail of the Oh My God particle. A cosmic ray from space arriving with an energy measured at 320 exa electron volts. That's 40 million times more energy than even the Large Hadron Collider, the most powerful accelerator ever built by humans, can produce. It took eight months to even spot the signal in the data. It looked so outside for what researchers were used to seeing. And afterwards, the group spent a further year convincing themselves that this signal was real and not an error on their instruments. And that's because, as far as we understood, a particle of this energy is impossible. Back in the 1960s, Grierson, Zatzipan, and Kuzmin computed that any particle energized above 50 exa electron volts, or roughly the energy of a proton traveling at approximately 99.9999999999999998% of the speed of light, should interact with the microwave background radiation over long distances, which should act as a slowing force on the particle over this duration. This GZK limit suggested that the Oh My God particle must either be impossible or must have originated very recently and relatively nearby so that it hadn't yet had the opportunity to slow down, possibly that it originated within one of the local clusters of our galaxy. But when scientists turn other instruments to the calculated direction of origin of these particles, nothing out of the ordinary was observed. I found a great quote from Quantum Magazine about this from David Kierder, an astrophysicist at the University of Utah, who said, it's like you've got a gorilla in your backyard throwing bowling balls at you, but he's invisible. On May 27th of 2021, 30 years later, again in the desert of Utah, this time at the telescope array, the successor to the fly-eye detector, Toshiro Fuji, an astronomer from the Osaka Metropolitan University in Japan, stumbled across a similar bizarre signal. The telescope array consists of 507 surface detector stations arranged in a square grid that covers 700 kilometers squared outside of Delta, Utah in the state's west desert. The event triggered 23 of these detectors at the northwest region of the telescope array. This time, the event measured 240 exa electron volts, lower in energy than the Oh My God particle, but still five times higher in energy than our understanding of the laws of the universe would suggest should be allowed. This finding was published just last week in the Journal of Science, and it was recorded with the nickname the Amaterasu particle, after the Japanese sun goddess. Again, when Fuji and his team went to pinpoint the source of this particle, they failed to find a viable candidate in the night sky. There was no explosion or cosmic event that seemed to be the culprit. So what exactly is happening here? What are these particles and how are they moving so quickly? I want to answer that, but first I have to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has the largest online learning community for creatives with a wide depth and breadth of topics ranging from illustration, graphic design, photography, music marketing, and productivity. Classes are led by industry pros who have walked the walk and are supported by an active community of members ready to cheer you on. Skillshare have cultivated a selection of the best courses into learning paths that help you master specific skill sets. Recently, I've been following the graphic design basics pathway. The variety of topics covered here from introductory to more advanced ideas has been really helpful as a refresher 
as we try and tackle some more complicated visuals and animations on this channel. What I like about Skillshare is that it focuses on a learning by doing approach to teaching where each member can create and share a project completed during the class. And lessons are delivered on demand so you can learn at your own pace no matter your starting skill level. If you're into learning, exploring and discovering new hobbies or passions, Skillshare is a fantastic place to get started. And for the first 500 people to use my link in the description down below, you'll get one month free trial. Thank you Skillshare for supporting science content on the internet. Now back to the video. Cosmic rays cover a broad category of phenomena, but are usually a highly energetic atomic nuclei, typically just a proton, and very occasionally just electrons traveling through space at speeds approaching that of the speed of light. Thousands of these cosmic rays strike every square foot of the Earth's atmosphere every second, but we only discovered them in the early 1910s when Austrian physicist Victor Hest ascended on a hot air balloon with an ionizing radiation detector and found that as he increased in altitude, the amount of ionizing radiation also increased. When Hess went to conduct these experiments during a solar eclipse and measured no reduction in ionizing radiation, he reasoned that these particles must come from sources other than our sun. Cosmic rays evaded detection for so long because typically at sea level, only very low energy particles produced as a result of secondary actions from cosmic rays striking on the upper atmosphere reach us to actually be observed. When cosmic rays do hit the upper atmosphere, they blast apart the nucleus of oxygen and hydrogen gas molecules, generating many secondary particles. These travel a short distance in our atmosphere and repeat the process, building a shower of billions of secondary particles that scatter to the surface. The footprint of this secondary shower is massive and requires the detectors cover an area as large as that of the telescope array. These surface detectors utilize a suite of instrumentation that gives researchers information about each cosmic ray, the timing of the signal shows its trajectory, and the amount of charged particles hitting each detector reveals the primary particle's original energy. Ever since 1991, the perplexity of these mysterious ultra-high energy cosmic rays like the Oh My God particle arriving at Earth prompted the astrophysics community to develop better detectors to further understand their behavior. And since their development, there have been not just a few additional detections, but hundreds of thousands above that one exa-electron volt mark. Between 2004 and 2007, the initial runs of the Pierre Auger Observatory detected 27 events with estimated arrival energies above the 50 exa electron volt mark. That is about one such event every four weeks in the 3000 km square area that it covered. This most recent detection, the Amaterasu particle, is the second most highest energy particle ever detected since 1991. So we know this isn't a one-off event or that it's bad data, but how could it be possible that these particles are reaching speeds so close to the speed of light? One leading theory, though there doesn't seem to be anywhere near complete consensus on the matter, is that these particles are being accelerated by shock acceleration from things like solar flares or neutron stars or supernova events. In all cases, there is an accelerating front of ionized heated matter, which is usually called plasma, moving faster than the speed of sound in the particles. This causes particles to bunch up and form an expanding pressure wave moving outward into the universe. Some astrophysicists believe that some of these moving particles become trapped between the moving particle front and the magnetic field pushing it behind and start bouncing between the two, increasing in energy with each bounce until ultimately they find a gap in the advancing particle front and escape out into space at many times the energy and speed of the advancing front. And you might initially say, oh, okay, that's why we haven't spotted these explosions out in the night sky yet, because the secondary plasma wave hasn't actually reached us. In theory, if these explosions were generating a lot of energy on the electromagnetic spectrum, we should be seeing light also arriving simultaneously with these particles. And for most cases, we aren't. So what is actually happening here? As early as 2015, the 262 square kilometer telescope array in Utah was starting to see levels of statistical significance in locating the source of some of these particles to the constellation Ursa Major. And recent results from the Pierre Auger Observatory appear to show ultra high energy cosmic rays arrival direction appears to be correlated in general with extragalactic supermassive black holes at the center of nearby galaxies. These are otherwise called active galactic nuclei. 
But these results, as I said, aren't yet anywhere near unambiguous. What's happening in these AGNs is that they are emitting a significant amount of energy across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio through to gamma ray wave bands. This radiation from an AGN is theorized to result from the accretion of matter into a supermassive black hole at its core, producing high electric fields and a continual ion source, which potentially is enough to make these feasible candidates for producing ultra-high energy cosmic rays. These very strong electric fields and a continuous flow on ions may be turning these AGNs into something like a cosmic railgun, firing particles out into the universe. Though why is it that only some of these particles seem to hit these ludicrously high speeds? These two theoretical models of what might be happening seem reasonably credible, but there's also a bunch of alternative theories. Some folk in the dark math community have hypothesized that active galactic nuclei are capable of converting dark matter into high energy protons, because if something weird is happening in the universe, it's almost always fair to blame it on something we haven't found and might have mysterious properties. For now, at least, my preferred explanation is the cosmic game of Pong, because I think that's the most interesting one to think about, but I also acknowledge that my personal preference doesn't have anything to do with what the universe is actually doing. As I mentioned, astrophysicists are broadly confused as to what is happening, but to shed more light on the nature of this phenomena, the Large Telescope Array is in the middle of an expansion project that's adding 500 new scintillator detectors to increase its overall footprint to 2,900 square kilometers, about the size of Rhode Island. This will hopefully give us a deeper understanding on the origin and nature of these strange particles that are determined to break the universe's speed limit. But for now, all we can do is wait and conjecture. What do you think could be the source of these near light speed cosmic rays? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like this episode, check out a video I did not too long ago about a different mysterious signal arriving from the depths of space every 22 minutes at Earth for the past 35 years. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.